and accentuate different major things in the world. And that's awesome. Tremendous setting for what should be a tremendous match. Sergio Pagni of Italy, ranked fifth in the world. He was only 12th in the World Cup rankings, but he did what he had to do to get here. And in the quarterfinals this morning, he defeated Pierre Julien Deloche, 149, 142, extracting revenge for a loss he suffered at the hands of uh, Pierre Julien Deloche in Poland at stage four of the Archery World Cup Tour. He'll take on Braden Gillantine of the United States, ranked second in the world. Braden coming off a win this morning over Min Leong of Korea, 148 to 147. And that was a very, very tough and very close match. Yeah, yeah he told me he's like, he was really nervous on that last arrow and he said he just really had to get it gone. And you know, he shouldn't do it. Braden's had a good year, I mean, Winning some tournaments in the U.S. has always been solid. You know, it's been a good year for him. You look at Braden's year, it started off with three gold medals in Shanghai Stage 1. In Antalya, lost in the bronze medal match, but picked up a silver in Medellin, and then a team gold down in, or I should say, over in Poland in Wrocław. Well, this should be a good match where Sergio hasn't you know, these guys have both won these the World Cup finals in the last little while, so neither one has that want in their head or anything like that. Sergio hoping to win his third World Cup title in the last five years, and he's off to a good start. It looks like it just caught the line on the bottom at six o'clock, but you can see Braden shake his head. He knew where it was on a one off. Peace. No question about that one. Opens the door a little bit. Uh, he doesn't answer. Uh -huh. I think we're going to end up with a tie at 29s by the looks of uh, Braden Zero. So, Pia Pani, Sergio's wife, in the coach's box. Helping out today is Sergio, who shot a tremendous match this morning, had a great win. Defeating Pierre Julien Deloche, 149 to 146. You shoot a 149, you're going to be tough to beat. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And there you're right, Rio. Yeah. It's a 29. And Brayden's going to get a good laugh out of it. He's a little upset at first, but now he's like, well, we're tied. It's a whole new match again. It's, you know, four ends now versus five. Penny and Galantine are tied. Galantine will be shooting first on target number one. So 29 points for Sergio Pagni and 29 points for Braden Galantine. And we're all tied up. There are no ugly tens, are there? No. It no. doesn't matter. It's on the line, just biting the line. I said to a friend of mine, I said, I will take 45 ugly tens <laughs> as the one pretty nine. <laughs> there is nothing ugly about a ten. What a great Peace. shot provided by our crew here in Paris. It was a good, solid shot. And the pressure shifts over to Pagny. A little more of an open door. Braden and I were talking about the differences from the practice field over here. And I would just guess that he gave it a few Peace. extra clicks and he hit his first arrow high and then took too many off and shot them too on that low side. Mm -hmm. And you can see he's getting it dialed back in the middle. Peace. Ten. Ten. One point match at this point. Peace, peace, peace. Great Great ten, 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 ten. Check that now. Okay. 
this. That was a strong finish by Sergio Pagni. So still a one-point match after the first six arrows. So nip and tuck, pretty much what we expected. I don't think this is any surprise at all. No, no, both of them are shooting good. And with the, uh, the rounds at 50 meters, scores can be so tight. I like to say we'll go back to Sergio's got his wife in the box. Braden has his dad. Gives you that break of in between going, hey, you know, maybe a joke or two or something going on. Or about or the weather. Yeah, something, something to kind of break the monotony or tell him, like, hey, I had my sight a little low or something, you know. Your golf game. Yeah. <laughs> So we were discussing that for next week when we're in uh, Turkey about there's a golf course right next to the hotel. Mm -hmm. Long way to the whole set of golf clubs. Do you really want a coach to, to get that technical with you between ends? <laughs> you know, there are coaches that feel like they need to be. Uh, I have had a situation where at the World Championships, we had a coach in the team event come up to us and try and tell one of the guys he knew why he was shooting bad. We had just shot two points off perfect. Mm -hmm. And uh, it really bothered uh, Braden, and Braden actually asked him to leave the box. And to me, when you get to this level, you don't need need that. You need more no, no. more support, no, no. moral support. Yeah, you know, the, we know what's going on. You know when you make that bad shot, you know that feeling, and so. And you generally know what happened, yeah. and why it went that way. Yeah. Oh, great shot by Braden Galantine. I, and I'm sure Braden's feeling it now, knowing that Sergio missed that one. It just made him a little more, I want to close the door a little tighter, give me a little more room. Not easy to get a two-point lead on Sergio's no. Pagny. As Sergio He's comes surging four. back. Mm, point given back. Yeah. Well, I don't think at any point this will be a blowout anywhere. These two are, are shooting way too well. It's uh, <laughs> like NASCAR when they're racing. Yeah. Wheel to wheel, bumper yeah. to bumper. Who just gets the last little bit. Exactly. <laughs> hey, great shot. Back in the 10 ring. So he maintains his lead, but now by one. So Braden Galantine, led lead by one after the second end. It was tied after the first end at 29 all. Braden went up by one, 59 to 58 after the second end. And he maintains that one point lead, although he did go up by two there, but just for a moment. Yeah, just a moment. And and I'm sure he's kicking himself a little bit, thinking, oh, I left the, the door was open and I could have closed it a little more, and, and I didn't, so. Yeah, makes for better drama, better suspense. It does. Keeps the folks on the edge of the seat, watching at home, wherever that may be around the world. Those targets 50 meters away. Tomorrow, they will move those targets out of the way and set up some other targets behind that are 70 meters away for the recurve finals. Well, the recurve uh, quarterfinals we'll have in the morning, and then the semifinals, and then the medal matches. Lots of great archery coming up this weekend from Paris. And a lot of emotion. Braden, one of the most emotional athletes I've seen in this sport. Yeah. And I think for the most part, it works for him. Yep, and that's every sport has to have what works for you. I mean, we go back to, I've always kind of take the page from Jerry Rice of act like you've been there before, you know, so. Depends on how, you, how it works for you. I mean, mm -hmm. We watch other wide receivers that are amazing that did dances in the end zone. So it's what works best for you. Right now it's working for Braden Galantine, who maintains a one-point edge going to the <laughs> fourth end. And we'll get a shot, hopefully, of the other target. And there it is. There's the shot by Sergio Pagni. Puts the pressure on him again. And it's a good shot. Good shot, bud. Ninety-eight, ninety-seven now. Ooh, hello. A little more of an open door again, and I'm gonna say probably Braden will capitalize on it. Oh, and you could see the expression on his face. Yeah. And he knew it. He let it go. Just like we yeah. talked about, you know, he's kicking himself at times, going, "Man, I had the open door." I could hear him let out that yell up here. 
So that was a break for Sergio Pagni, who comes back with a big bullseye there. And keeps the pressure on. One point is not really, it's, it's one arrow, a nine. So he keeps the one point lead in the moving end. You know, just like we talked about, that's, he's going to walk into the last end knowing he can shoot a 29, and the other guy's got to shoot a 30 to tie him. Which, you, at this point, you don't want to tie because that closest to dead center can go anyway. For you personally, do you like it when there's more pressure there when it's a close match? Depends on how you're shooting. If you feel like you've got your bow set up and you're just shooting the best you can, it doesn't matter. The close matches are nice because they'll push you more, but the big spreads make you feel more comfortable and sometimes you shoot a little better. Uh, I've had, I actually had that 150 I shot in uh, Shanghai. I had somebody come up and like, see Mark comes up and goes, well, had I not missed, you wouldn't have shot the 150. <laughs> and I said, I I'm not thinking much about that, Dmar. I'm just shooting what I can, so. I would imagine some guys do respond better when they're under the gun, have that pressure on them. It keeps pushing, yeah. you know. It gives you a good push. So. There's no room for let up here after four ends. It's still anybody's match. A one point lead, 117 to 116. Lead in favor of Braden Gelantine of the United States, who has led since the second end. It was tied at 29 to start this match. Cinque. And right now, Braden's on top, 117 to 116. And he puts Sergio, on him. yes. Yeah. Throws down the gauntlet. Yeah. Oh, we're all tied up now. Now we're tied. Yeah. With two arrows and to go. You can go. see the look on his face of, uh, I have this. So if Sergio can put the pressure back on, it could get interesting. A little nervous. No, no. See, and that happens occasionally. He finds out I'm tied, that no, the no. game's open. It's Let's see how we go from here. On Braden. Yes. Braden. It ten. Back in front again yeah. by one. Yeah. Sergio's got to hope for a 10 to put a little pressure on to actually have a chance. No, and he doesn't. Oh. Opens the door. I will just about guarantee this is a 10 from Brayden. All he needs is a nine to earn his ticket to the gold medal match, and he is there. Brayden Gallantine, big hug from his dad, Don. A lot of emotion right there. As Brayden Gallantine fights off Sergio Pagni. No easy feat, no, no small feat at all to defeat Sergio. But he was able to do it. And despite the fact it was tied there late in the match, Brayden Gellantine was able to get it back on the very next shot. Yeah, right. I said Brayden's been shooting good. He's, you know, he's had a good run this year. He really, really has. Of course, last year won the World Cup title in Tokyo. And then has had a great year so far this year as Rio Wild just told you. And there's the final score, 146 to 144. So it's in the books. And it will be Braden Gallantine going up against Martin Damsbo.